Welcome to Bodybuilding with Pastor Jed and Pastor Kana. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you joined us this evening. We're delighted to finally be getting out of the works of the flesh <laughs> <laughs> and into the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, uh, yes. The works of the flesh are a little, they're kind of a downer. Well, I think we probably do need to read the scriptures that are appropriate. Must we? Well, we, we must. Okay. We All right. Must. Well, then let's start there in Galatians chapter 5. And uh, we're not going to back up and talk about all of those works of the flesh again. And we finished those which went through verse 21 of right? chapter 5. And verse 22 just simply says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now, the fruit of the Spirit, I think it is very cool that it starts with love. Okay? Because love is something that people feel like they're familiar with. Yes. But we have to remember that the fruit of the Spirit, this is literally, this is um, substance that is grown out of a, a spiritual place relationship with God. These are, these are spiritual fruit. Yes, I think we described it last week or the week before as the continuing evidence of the infilling of the Spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So these... these descriptors that we're going to use, a lot of them are going to be only applicable in a spiritual manner. Like, these are supernatural kind of fruit. This isn't something you can develop yourself. Right. The fruit of the Spirit must be developed by God Almighty yes. within you. Yes. And so, when we, where we start here with love, um, in this particular context, Love, uh, the Greek word for this love, is agape, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and that is described um, in Strong's Concordance as being divine love. So it's a love yes. beyond what we can produce ourselves. Mm -hmm. It has to be love that, um, that really comes from God. And there's no better place to look at what that looks like than 1 Corinthians chapter 13. What's significant about that is, of course, we just did the, the um, gifts of the Spirit. And a lot of that stuff was in chapter 12 and in chapter 14. And that 13th chapter right in the middle, um, verses 4 through 8 basically give you this definition of what God's love really is and yeah. what it needs to be in our lives. Yes. So, um, here in 1 Corinthians 13, let's read uh, verses 4 through 8. Well, okay. And let's keep in mind that when we... Uh, the, 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 the King James um, tends to use the word charity but not in the sense uh, of, uh, of, of someone standing on the street corner with a cardboard sign and you handing them uh, a dollar. I saw that guy. You saw him too? The car just ahead of me today handed him a cigarette and he seemed to be okay with that because his sign said, anything helps. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. I saw him. He was smoking the cigarette, and the car in front of me gave him some money. And what was interesting about that is that Kevin had just said, I can't believe he's standing out here smoking a cigarette thinking someone's going to give him money. <laughs> Do you know that your mother said the very same thing? No way. And I said, well, I, she said, if he can afford cigarettes, why is he begging on the street? And I said, he's begging for cigarettes. <laughs> The car ahead of us just, just gave, gave him, him a cigarette. Exactly. And she said, oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, oh, she was right. okay with that then. Right. 
Um, and that's the thing in Asheville is you never know what someone will hand you out the window. Right. That's true. <laughs> right? That's true. Yes. Yeah. But um, so in place of uh, charity in here, in yes. this passage of scripture, perhaps use love instead. That Yes. Actually, the, the interpretation, uh, a, a, a better interpretation yeah. uh, from the Greek would be the word love. Right. And, so, and agape is what is used in this passage also. So. Yes, and, and so when I come to that word charity, I'm going to say love so that it will make more sense. We'll see. Okay, we'll, we'll see, see if it, it makes does. any sense or not. Verse number four, yeah. <laughs> uh, love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love never fails, but where there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Um, so you read a couple extra scriptures there. Um, we're looking... I'm sorry, was I supposed to stop earlier? Well, I thought maybe you would stop after <laughs> love never fails, since that's where our definition ended. Oh, okay. But well, it's all really good. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's really good stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, this is a great definition of what, chi what love is. It's, it's long-suffering, which is interesting because that's going to show up again in what we're studying. Yeah. Um, it's kind. Again, that's going to show up. Some of these things are so interesting, Dad, because they have all these crossover relationships, you know, the, these fruit of the Spirit that, that really support one another. They're, none of these stand alone. You cannot have a fruit of the Spirit. Well, that's true, and, and, and since it starts with love, it, it, it reflects us back to the, to the Scripture that talks about the fact that by this shall they know that, we, that you are indeed uh, my disciples, that you have love one to another. Right. Okay, now let me, let me make a proposition here, or not a proposition, but a, 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 a a supposition? A supposition. Let me just throw something out there. Okay. Okay. What if... Okay. And you know, you and I have had this debate before about the equipping gifts. Yes. About whether or not there are four or five. Okay. <laughs> uh, what if there's only one? Oh, wow. Yeah. What if there, there is only one, uh -huh. the fruit of the Spirit is love, and that, they, and that love is manifest through each of the other mentioned attributes? Right, okay. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, for example, for example, um, let me let me go back over to that scripture. But the fruit of the spirit is love, uh -huh. okay, and then it adds joy, peace, long suffering, etc. Right. Now, just suppose that the fruit of the spirit is love. Yeah. And then joy is love's strength. Uh huh. And Peace is love's security. Uh -huh. And each one of those has an attribute that how it ties itself to love. Right. And, and, and whether or not that's true or not, uh, we, we can speculate on that, but, but we're going to talk about each of those attributes and how yeah. we connect to them and why it's important because if we as and I use the word with quotations around it, 
as Christians okay. profess this relationship that we have with our Creator, yeah. yet it has not changed us in any way, mm -hmm. and it has not affected us to the point where people can tell that we are different mm -hmm. from the way we used to be. Right. Um, then there there seems to be no basis uh, to believe that. Right. And so, and so then what would be the point? So what would be the point? Exactly. It, we can become a professing Christian. What we need to do is to become a possessing Christian. Right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and in possessing that relationship with God, that that relationship with God changes us, right. and the fruit of the Spirit is a descriptive way of describing how we change. Right, right. Yeah, because it's, it's literally showing, I like that, uh, a possessing Christian, you are possessing Christ, and Christ is possessing you. Yes. Jesus was all the time saying things like that, but particularly in John, where he was saying things like, by this shall people know that you're my disciples and that the way that you love yeah. one another. He's like, you know, As the I Father in Christ, in me, you know, I in the Father and the Father in me and yeah. I in you and yeah. you in the Father. Yeah. And, and everybody's yes. like, whoa, 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 what is this? Some kind of weird Russian doll situation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But, yeah, but it is. It's us and Christ and Christ in us. Yeah. It is absolutely exactly right. like that. And, and this idea of love being these things in 1 Corinthians, like these things are not easy. We, we just used this in a wedding recently. Oh, yeah. Boy, and, that was um, a disaster, wasn't it? Well, I love to use it in weddings because I want to just go ahead and just like lay it on them. Yeah. Like this yeah. is what love yeah. is. Are you sure you love this person? <laughs> Right. Love doesn't it's, seek its own. It's not too late to back out. Well, right? I mean, you want them to be, yeah. you know, go ahead and, and decide before the statute of limitations runs out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, you want people to have this. And usually when we're doing marriage uh, premarital counseling, we bring these things up. Yeah. So that people really can have this sort of thought on it. Yeah. Like, this is what love is. Are you sure that's what you can demonstrate towards this person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Yeah. Because you have to at least be willing to try. Yeah. Do you really love them or are you just attracted to right. them? Right. Right. Yeah. Or you, do you love them or are you in love with the idea of loving them? Right. I think yeah. that a lot of times is the way people actually feel. Yes. And I would go so far as to say that's the way that Christians sometimes are, the way that they treat God. It's not, and this is going to sound really harsh, Dad. Okay, say it. <clears throat> it's not necessarily that Christians love God. Because God said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. That's what he said. Yeah. And it's not that they love God because they don't keep His commandments. Yeah. But they love the idea of loving God. Yeah. They love the idea of being a child of God. Yeah. And, and like I said, I know that's really harsh. Yeah. But there is, there is a whole lot bundled into this. Um, charity or love doesn't put itself first. It's not arrogant. It doesn't act unseemly. It doesn't... It's not easily provoked. Yeah. It doesn't seek its own way first. Yeah. When was the last time you saw people that really, truly did not seek their own? It's hard. It is like, you, it really has to be a yeah. God thing. And so we do have to pursue His Spirit and the infilling of His Spirit and the moving and the flowing of His Spirit yes. in order to develop these characteristics. And love is so important because like you said, from love flows all these others. Yeah. Like love is really such a huge exactly. God is love. God is love. And if we are going to be like him, we have to become love. That's really good. We have to become love. Yeah. 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 I love that. But that but it's hard. 
because it's so. It's or do you so, just love the idea of that? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> I love the idea of that, and I want to be that. Yeah, that's yeah, what. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. So love is our first, our first fruit of the spirit here. The yeah. second is really awesome. Also, okay. One of my favorites. Now, joy. Um, is so cool because the the he, the excuse me the Greek for joy is kara or perhaps chara because I didn't take Greek I have no idea but what's cool about it Dad is that it means grace recognized in other words joy comes from recognizing the grace in your life. And so let's go over to uh, Romans, is it Rome? Yeah, Romans 5. Okay. This is going to be one of your favorites. Romans 5 and 10 through 11. Yes, and here we are. Well, that was fast. Well, it, it was. <laughs> it was just amazing. Uh, so Romans, Romans 5, 5 and verses. 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Okay. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. For not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Now, the reason I say this is one of your favorites uh -huh. is because you always say, before you can rejoice, you have to joy. Yes. Right? I mean, it just makes sense. It just makes sense. And so, but this gives you this understanding that joy is a sort of divine recognition. Yes. It is divinely inspired recognition of the grace in your life that allows you to have that joy from which you can rejoice. Yes. And I believe it was Nehemiah that looked at Israel and said... Boy, y'all are pitiful. <laughs> actually, it was the Jerusalemites that he was talking to. <laughs> but he said... The joy of the Lord is your strength. Right. And if you think about that in the context yeah. of grace recognized. Yes. Our strength comes from recognizing yes. the unmerited favor of God in our lives. Right. God loves us anyway. Right. God loves me in spite of where I came from, what I have done, yeah. what I have been, what I think. Right. You know, uh, wow, it's just, it's just uh, I, we don't deserve it. Right. That's what grace is all about, you know. We, we, we talk about mercy and grace and we just, we just say, you know, hold on mercy until grace can get here. But if grace can get here... Yeah. You know, if grace can get here, then we don't have, well, I mean, we have everything to joy about. Right. And then we can rejoice. Yeah. And rejoice. It's, yes. You know, grace is such a tough thing for Christians. Yeah. And, I, I'm, it, and it's always been the case, Dad. If you look at through the New Testament, you know, Paul and Peter and John, all these guys... They, they had their work cut out for them in having to constantly redirect the early church to, yes, all of these things, all these good things need to flow, these works need to flow from your life, but that's not what saves you. You are saved and thus good works flow. Uh -huh. You don't flow in good works and that's what saves you. you. you don't it earn is it. Yes. absolutely grace. Yeah. The, the book of Romans is so fantastic oh, yeah. for, for talking about grace. And I love that it touches on joy. We might in do this a Bible study on that sometime. Well, we might. Uh, we just, we've got so much to do. <laughs> <laughs> we've got so many things to study. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that, that definition of grace. Uh, recognized and there was a verse that we used this morning in this morning service over in Psalms 
in uh, Psalm 126 and 5, I think. 126. Yeah, 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 yeah. 126 and 5, it says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And um, that is a powerful scripture because joy is not happiness. Right. Happiness is essentially uh, a decision that it's you make. It's a decision that you make. It has exactly. nothing whatsoever to do with your circumstances. And joy is recognizing grace in your life and, and the things that God has done. Yeah. And so those things, um, it, it's just pretty cool to see that no matter what you go through and whatever adversity you may encounter, you're going to reap in joy. You're going to be able to see, you know what? God's got me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love that. Yes. All right. So then our third uh, fruit of the Spirit that we wanted to talk about tonight is peace. Wow. Peace is... You know, the Bible calls Jesus, in, in a Messianic prophecy, the Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace, yes. Uh, and he said on one occasion, my peace I give unto you. Yeah. Not the peace that the, that world, the world gives. gives. Right. My peace I yeah. give unto you. Uh, I love that because yeah. uh, one of my, and I can't remember now who it was, it may have been... Um, Pastor David Butler. I think it was Pastor David Butler. He was talking to me uh, about peace. And he was talking about how Jesus is our Prince of Peace. He gave us peace. He said, my peace I leave you. My peace yeah. I give unto you. Right? Yeah. It's already given. We have this tendency to ask Him for peace. And it's like asking for something we already have access to. We just haven't received it. Yeah. And why is that? You it, tell it, me. It is because we are looking at the wrong thing. Our lives are sometimes turned upside down. Every one of us experience these, these, these moments in life when, when things are not going right, right and when, when, when our spouses have made us mad or when our, our, our children are not acting the way that we want them to yeah. and, uh, or maybe not the way God does either but uh, <laughs> or, or something's going on on our job that has, has you know, disrupted yeah. our, our lives and we don't have peace because we are too busy focusing on the storm, turmoil, the right? storm, yes, yeah. exactly and, and we need Peace in the midst of the storm. Yeah. We want the storm to go away. Right. Well, I mean that's I mean that's that's of nothing course. wrong with that. Right. Of course yeah. we do. Okay. But meantime, yeah. Meantime, while the storm is still here, yeah. we can still have the peace of God that passes understanding. We can't understand how we can have it, right. but we can have it in yes. the middle of it the storm. Definitely doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, wasn't it somebody at conference, maybe it was Kevin Bates, that was talking about um, what, what Jesus wanted for his disciples was not that they would have the faith to recognize that he was the master of the storm and could make it stop, but that they would have the faith to recognize I'm the master of the storm. You can just lay down and go to you sleep. You can take a nap in the storm. And you know, I actually preached a message some years ago. Taking a nap uh, in the storm. Uh, or, so, or I can sleep through a storm. Yes, I can sleep through a storm. Was it really uh, called that? Well, I think that it was. I think it was. And I told the story that I... And, and, and this wasn't something that I, that I made up. I heard it. I heard somebody else preach something like this, <laughs> <laughs> and I used their story right? about about a man that was uh, uh, he was applying for the job as a manager of not 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 a manager. It was, it was a it was a, a farm. It was a ranch. It was a, uh, and, and he it was a working ranch, and he was applying for the job of foreman, I guess. Okay, and uh, and so when the owner of the of the of the ranch interviewed him said why should i give you this job right and his response was i can sleep through a storm 
And that is a very strange response. Well, it is, but but then uh, this was a woman who, whose husband had died, and, and, and she was having this responsibility of this ranch. And here this guy is being so arrogant to right. say, you know, I can, I can, sleep, through I can sleep through a storm. And she's thinking, how is that helpful? Well, yeah, but, but then something else was telling her, you need to hire this guy. And so she did hire him. She found him to be very competent okay. at taking right. care of all the things. And then one night, a storm came. And she woke up, and the shutters on the house were just beating against the side of the building. And uh, the wind was blowing, and, 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 and they, it was hailing, and it was hard, heavy rain. And, and, uh, and she was thinking, oh, oh, Lord, all that hay that we have harvested oh, is, 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 was, out, was out in the field. And, 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 the, and the cows... Uh, you know they they need to be in the barn right. and they and and she gets up and she dresses and she goes out into the storm over to the building where her crew sleeps and the foreman was there, or the, maybe the foreman's house and she she knocks on the door and, and until he he wakes up and uh, and she says she says don't you know what's going on she says the, 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 that fresh cut hay is going to be ruined and, 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 and the cows right. are going to be like, scattered and this all of this. is ridiculous. The last thing you need to be doing yeah. is sleeping through the storm. Yeah. And, she and, reminds and, me just like of those disciples with Jesus. Oh yeah, exactly. And, and, and he said, I told you when you hired me, I can sleep through a storm. And she says, you're fired. You need to get up <laughs> and take care of these things. And he says, the reason I can sleep through a storm is because I paid attention to the weather. All the hay was covered. All the cows were put away. All the animals were bedded down. Everything was secured wow. so that I could sleep through the storm. Everything's all yes, right. Yes, yes. And so that, that really is the peace that we're talking about. Yes, that it even is. in the, the storms of life, that we can. That, that we can find that bubble of peace. Right. Yes. You know? Yeah. That encapsulation of peace. I love that uh, representation. You know, the, the Bible, when you look at the Greek basis for peace, yeah. it, it is described as God's gift of wholeness. And in fact, in Romans 8 and 6, because when you think about that gift of... The reason that we don't have peace when things are not happening is because there's something missing. Yeah. Like yeah. we're afraid that things are not properly dealt with. Like yeah. the lady, the yeah. ranch owner. Right. Okay? That's why you have disruptions to your peace. And so uh, in Romans 8 and 6... It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life and, and peace. And so, in that you can kind of see what God's gift of wholeness really means. It is, He is our Prince of Perfection. He's our Prince of Wholeness. He's our Prince of, I have already taken care of everything so I can sleep through the storm. Yes. <laughs> and, and Dad, that is what... Because right now there's been so many you know, health issues and just all these upsetting things that are happening in people's yeah. lives, right? Yeah. And people don't have peace. They have fear and anxiety and worry and dread. Yeah. And it's like, but if, if we have taken care of the things that need to be taken care of, you yes. Know? If we have intentionally placed all of that in the hands of the prince of peace, of peace, yes. then whatever happens, we can have peace. Yes. And that has to be God, because when you look at the circumstances around, I've seen people get upset with others because they have peace instead of turmoil in the storm. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going through the same storm. Right, right. And they do. They do. They're like, 
They're just like the disciples. If, if your life is going to be a disaster, or if, if my life is going to be totally turned upside down, yours should be. Too. Right. Like, why are you not upset about this? You know? I, which yeah. reminds me of another story ah. that I'm going to start for you. Okay. In which you and Mom were evangelizing. Y'all are in a travel trailer. Yeah. You are stopped at a road, uh, you know, a, a roadside park. And... There is uh, a huge bubble that has appeared on the tire of oh, the travel yes. trailer. Oh, yeah. I remember that story well. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, Mom was upset. Well, she was, but let me, let me kind of explain why she was, okay? Now, you know, we... Because there was a bubble on the side of the tire. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And y'all ain't have that's no true. money. Yeah, and, and y'all uh, ain't have no y'all ain't at home. <laughs> you right, know, right? But that, now, I mean, I totally understand why she was upset. <laughs> you don't have to explain why she was upset. She's like, we're in another state. My daddy can't come get us, right? <laughs> She's thinking all the things I'd be thinking. Uh huh. Yeah. You're, and 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 here we've got this problem. We ain't got no money. We don't know. We don't know anybody. Yeah. What are we gonna do? Yeah. And you did not give a very satisfactory response when you went out and looked at the tire and came back in and sat down. Well, right. But, and, and, and quite frankly, uh, perhaps I underreacted, <laughs> but she was sort of overreacting. Okay. Uh, she's not watching this series, so no, 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 we no, feel comfortable not. talking about we her. Can, yeah, we can. <laughs> and, uh, but basically, we were on our way to our first out-of-state revival. Okay. We were evan just been, had been evangelizing in our home state of Louisiana, and we were heading to Tennessee. We were going to be preaching there, and stopped overnight, and and didn't have any any money. We didn't, we virtually were broke, uh, and 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 so. Um, I was outside setting the trailer up, and she was inside cooking supper, and and uh, uh, you two kids were in there with her, I guess. I you weren't I out there know. with me, I was but very very small. Yeah, you were very very small, and uh, and so she came out to tell me that supper was ready. Yeah. And as she went back up the steps of the travel trailer, she just happened to glance at the tire yeah. that was right beside the step. And there was a huge knot. It was the size of a grapefruit. On the side. On the side of a tire. You just just a big old bubble yeah, sticking out good. there. And and I'd never seen a tire do that no. before. And uh, and she says, Oh, what is oh 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 what's wrong with that? Well, I, I I bent down and just kind of squeezed no, it. No, you didn't. I did, and she says, "Don't do, don't that. do that! Don't do that! Don't do oh that!" Oh my God! I would have said the same thing. Like, go. Well, anyway, I, you know, I thought, well, I need, I need right. To, yeah, well, anyway, what is that? So, um, so she she says, um, she says, "What are you going to do?" And I said, "Well, we hadn't had that trailer very long. I I didn't even know if we had a spare tire." <laughs> I, I didn't know how to change one on a travel trailer. Yeah, this right. thing was yeah. 32 feet long. Right, that's a lot. And so I said, well, tell you what let's do. Let's eat supper while it's hot. Yeah. And so she agreed to that, and we went in, and, 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 and we sat down, and we were eating supper. And in the middle of supper, and by what I mean by the middle of supper, I mean that I wasn't through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I even remember right. it was fried pork chops. Oh my God, that sounds And it delicious. was rice and gravy and and uh, and and was was it some kind of peas? It was either field peas or purple, purple hull peas. peas. Oh my God! And, and uh, you're you know, one of my favorite favorite that. meals. And and uh, and then I heard a gun in. I heard a gun go off, and we were in an RV. Well, we were in a state park. Um, you know, guns aren't allowed in state parks. Well, I know that. I know that. And and we were in Mississippi. We were in a state park, uh, in, in you know, parked in a in a in an RV space there. And and I heard that gun go off. And I was thinking to myself, there shouldn't be any guns. And and 
And, and your mother said to me, she said, did you hear that? I said, well, I'm not deaf, which was true at that time. It was true at that time. And, uh, and uh, she said, that tire, it just blew. Oh, so she immediately was oh, like, she that knew was the tire. Exactly. She said, that, that tire, has, it, it, is, it has gone flat. And, and so I resumed eating, and that seemed to upset her a little bit. Yeah. And she says, Jed Douglas, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to finish eating my supper, and then I'm going to go look at it. And she says, no, you're not. You're going to go look at it right now. Okay. You're going to have to figure right. out what are we going to do. And that is a demonstration of how you decided. You made a conscious choice to keep peace in your marriage. Yes. And so I got peace up of from the, the table and I went outside and I looked at the tire and I came back inside and I sat down and I began to eat again. <laughs> I and, can imagine. And, uh, and that seemed to make her just really furious at, with, with me. And, uh, and, uh, and she says, well, well, and I said, well, what? See, and that doesn't help. I, I, That's I, making I, me mad, and I'm not even in this story. I know it. I know it. See, it runs in y'all's side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> and by that, I mean the female side. <laughs> it runs in y'all's side of the family. <laughs> I bet it would make Levi mad, too. <laughs> and Probably. Kevin. Probably. Uh, the whole mess of them. The whole so, mess of them. But I had peace. Yes, you did. <laughs> I had peace because... You had peace, and you had peace. And I had peace. <laughs> That's right. And I'd been praying for world peace. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, you know, I finally said, look, I went out there, I looked at the tire, all is well, and let's finish our supper. And she says, how can everything be well? Right. And I said, I don't know. I do not know. Right. I said, all I know is that that big bubble yeah. that was on the side of the tire is no longer there. And that there is a little scar about an inch long that looks literally looks like a scar would on a human body. Wow. And I said, it's, it's just about an inch long and just a little thin line. And the tire is not flat. And... I really like these pork chops. <laughs> this is a really good meal. This is so delicious. Um, that is, I love, I love that testimony because they, because it is a demonstration of, well, this sort of trust in the Lord in that, well, I don't know why this is going wrong. I can see and observe there's something wrong, but I can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to carry on. And then when it sounds like things are getting worse, I'm going to just trust that the Lord's got that too. Yes. And just a little bit of, of uh, uh, report, I would have to say, we continued to pull that travel trailer for the next three years. And... Uh, I never did replace that tire. <laughs> nice. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That was a blessed tire. Yeah. Well, um, I think that here uh, at Peace, yes. uh, we are going to we're going to close out this session and uh, and take up where we're leaving off next week. Okay. Um, this has been good. Love, yeah. joy, and peace. Yeah. We need them. Yes, right? absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope that both our testimonies and and the descriptors of what these fruit of the Spirit actually are has been a blessing to you and that you will seek the Lord's flowing of His Spirit to be able to produce those fruit in your life. I know that that's what we're seeking in our own lives. Yes. To build up the body of Christ. So thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful night.